Welcome back to the Emerald Corner. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than usual. I'm going to be sharing with you 26 of my favorite quotes or life lessons. And stay tuned because number 26 is going to change your perspective on everything. Well, hey there, I'm Kimberly Ferguson, CEO and founder of Emerald Expectations Accounting. I'm so happy that you're here. The Emerald Corner is a place where life and business meet, so I want to help you have a growing and profitable small business while maintaining a life with your loved ones, okay? It, today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual, but I am excited to share with you 26 of my favorite quotes and or life lessons. So I have been on this earth a short 32 years, but in that time span, there have been a lot of things that have honestly changed my life or changed my perspective on things and have truly helped make me the person that I am today, which is, you know, a wife, a daughter, a granddaughter, a niece, a business owner, a CEO, an employer, so, and even a Christian. So all of these things that I identify myself as have come from, in large part, these things that I'm going to be sharing with you. So let's jump in, shall we? Number one is don't let people live rent-free inside of your head. And maybe this is something that some of you have heard before, but what it means is don't let somebody control your thoughts with their actions or with their words. So oftentimes, I think as humans, we have the tendency to relive things or to think about things or to dwell on things or to hold grudges, all of that stuff, right? But really all you're doing is making yourself miserable. In most cases, the person who's offended you has probably already moved on with their life, right? And you're letting them continue to control you by letting them live rent-free inside of your head. So Forgiveness is a good thing. Forgiveness is something that you do for yourself, but you need to forgive them so that you can move on with your life and move past whatever happened that you're holding on to. So number two goes out to all the perfectionists out there. A done something is better than a perfect nothing. So a lot of people call themselves perfectionists and they use this as a way to not get things done, right? It's oftentimes an excuse. It's like, I'm a perfectionist. So no, I haven't done that yet. I haven't had the chance to get it perfectly right, right? And the difficult thing here is that having something that's done and imperfect is far better than something that is perfect and not done or never gets done, right? Sometimes we really just have to do it and just live with the fact that it's not going to be perfect and move on because done is better than not done, right? And therefore done is better than perfect. So number three, the world doesn't revolve around you. I know. <laughs> Especially in the world that we live in now, we all kind of want to think the world does revolve around us, especially with social media, YouTube, all the things that we have going on right now. We have literally been conditioned to think that the world does revolve around us. But take a step back for a second. Look at how many people you just know. I mean, that's probably a hundred, couple hundred people right off the bat, right? Maybe even a few thousand. But when you think about the fact that there are billions of people on this planet and there are things outside of this planet. We are so small. We are so small compared to what the rest of the world looks like and to what the universe looks like, right? So why are we living like we are the most important thing on the planet? I personally think it's better to live a life where you're giving, where you are generous with people and with your time and with your energy and I find that that has been much more fulfilling than spending all my time trying to fulfill my needs. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that I think you should neglect yourself. It just means that you're not the most important thing on the planet. And it's okay to remember that. It's okay to remember that all of your time doesn't need to be focused on you and your needs and your wants. But again, it doesn't mean you can't spend time on those things. <laughs> So number four is one that I used to say in high school all the time, and that is, it's not awkward unless you make it awkward. And we make it awkward, right? 
if you feel awkward on the inside, it doesn't mean that it has to come out on the outside. If you kind of get used to that feeling of that was awkward <laughs> and you just kind of embrace that feeling, then it becomes normal. And then you won't act awkward as much anymore. You'll be more natural. It's just kind of a mindset thing, I think, where it's like, I'm awkward. <laughs> and you're like, well, I guess I'm just awkward for the rest of my life. And I just have to live with this. It happens, right? But most of the time, people don't worry about it unless you point it out or unless you make it awkward or unless you feel awkward, right? A lot of the times they're just like, oh, okay, that was kind of weird, but they just move on. It's not a big deal unless you make it a big deal, right? Number five is a tough one. But if somebody else is mad at you and they don't tell you that they're mad at you and they don't bring it to you, it's not your problem. Yeah. So unless they bring it to you and they allow you to resolve their issue or to talk through their issue that they're having with you, or to even say that you'll correct whatever action that you took that hurt their feelings or made them angry, there's nothing you can do about it. You might not even ever know about it. So their burden isn't your burden unless they bring it to you. Number six, I'm going to use out of context, but I feel it. Okay. <laughs> This quote is, silence is golden. My stepfather used to use this growing up a lot, but I don't mean it the same way he did. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to business, when it comes to sales, sometimes when it comes to life, get comfortable with the silence. Kind of goes hand in hand with it's only awkward if you make it awkward. <laughs> but if you get comfortable with silence and you can sit there and not feel like you have to say something, then your life is going to get better. <laughs> a lot better because people hate silence. And especially when you're selling someone, if you can say, hey, the price is $5,000. Silence. The great thing is that other people aren't comfortable with silence. So that person that you're trying to sell to, they're going to fill the silence. And you can use that, right? You can learn more about them or you can see what their problems are with the pricing or the process that you're offering or whatever that looks like. But either way, you're going to come out of that silence with more information to use to your benefit. So number seven is another one that I know people struggle with, but that is that the way people treat you is a reflection of them, not you. So people treat you the way that they feel or the way that they've been treated or the way that They've seen people treat people, right? It's never about you. It's about them. It's about their experiences. It's about their history and their trauma and their X, Y, Z, right? So we have to realize that the way people treat us doesn't mean that we did something. It doesn't mean that we're a problem. Now, if they come to you and they say, you did this, you know, then... And that goes along with number five, that they are bringing a problem to you. And now it is your problem as well. But if they don't and they just treat you badly, that's not a reflection of you. It's not a reflection of your morals. It's not a reflection of your beliefs. It's not a reflection of who you are as a person. None of that stuff. It's all about them and their experiences and their education, their life, et cetera, right? It's not about you. Number eight is one that often gets me laughed at, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> and that is if you judge a fish by how well it climbs a tree, then he will live his entire life thinking he's stupid. Some of you just heard that and thought, I can relate, right? But the point is, is that we're not all good at the same things. I mean, I'm here because I'm good at accounting and you're probably not. But that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. You're probably good at something that I'm not good at, right? And that's how it works. We let the professionals handle the things that they're good at. And that is what brings value to our lives, right? So why can't we do that with other things? Why can't we say, I'm not good at being organized. So we bring in someone to help us organize. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're any less valuable to the world. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be here. What it means is that you have your own special talents and skills and gifts, and you should share those with the world and you should be proud of those. But just because you can't do everything doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Nobody can do everything. Nobody.
All right, number nine is not a quote. It is just a lesson. And that is that subservient doesn't mean that you have lower value. Subservient doesn't mean sub value. Or in other words, if you are under someone else's leadership, it doesn't mean that you are worth something less. You are still worth the same as the leader. Your value is still as much as the leader. And this goes for, you know, employer-employee relationships. This goes for potentially husband and wife or you know, whatever situation applies to you or children, if you have parents that are in charge of you, then that's okay. It doesn't mean you're less valuable than they are. It doesn't mean you have fewer skills. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. It just means that somebody else is above you in the hierarchy of X, Y, Z, right? Now, the truth is, is that everybody has somebody that they're subservient to, right? Whether it's kids and their parents, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's employee, employer, whether it's governor and, you know, the president of the United States, that you always have somebody who is above you in the hierarchy. And that's okay. That's just how it works. It's kind of like you can't have two cooks in the kitchen. You can't have two CEOs of a company. You have to have somebody who's kind of in charge of things, you know, that's just the way it is. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you're less important or less valuable. And it doesn't mean that you should be treated like you're less important or less valuable. Okay? We're all humans here. We all have intrinsic value endowed by our creator that give us importance. Right? All right. Number 10 is science, but I'm going to apply it to life. <laughs> and that is an object in motion stays in motion. And an object at rest stays at rest. Unless acted upon by an outside force, right? <laughs> now, this applies in science, like I said. But it also applies to us. You ever feel unmotivated? You can probably spend 10 hours sitting on the couch watching Netflix, right? Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. <laughs> but the same thing goes if you are you if you get up and you start cleaning your house. What happens most of the time? Most of the time you end up cleaning the whole house, right? You're like, I'm going to just clean the kitchen real quick, or I'm going to just do the dishes. And then you're like, oh, but now I can clean the countertops. Now I can sweep the floors. Now I can do this. You know, when you're on a roll, you're on a roll, right? No one's stopping you, right? <laughs> so it's the same thing with life, with everything. But when you find yourself at rest, that's when it's really hard to kick yourself into gear. And that's when it's probably the most important, right? Because we could spend the whole day watching Netflix, right? <laughs> or we can spend the whole day accomplishing things. So I think this is interesting, but it applies to us too. So number 11 is those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. And I would apply this to many things in life. <laughs> so if you have goals that people think are too big, the ones who mind don't matter right? They're not important to you. But the ones who do matter to you, they'll be supportive. They'll think, wow, that's an amazing goal, right? Same thing with a job that you want to have, or just a hobby you want to take on, or just a belief that you have. Those who mind are probably not the ones that are important to you, or they're probably not the ones who have been supportive to you or will be supportive to you. So maybe they're not people you want in your life, or they're people you want to limit in your life. And then the people who support you, the people who've always got your back, no matter what's going on in life, those are the people who don't mind and they matter, right? So number 12 is people who get mad when you set boundaries are often the ones who benefited from you not having them. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. <laughs> It's the same thing too, as you kind of grow, like if you climb the corporate ladder or if you you know, get control of your finances, or if you start losing weight or whatever it is that you are growing and becoming a better human for, people are going to be mad. And those are the people who benefited from you being down, right? They benefited from you suffering from not having boundaries or from you suffering from not having good financial status, from not having good control of your finances, from 
being the lowest peon on the corporate ladder, you know, whatever it is, these are the people who benefited from having you down. Like I heard the other day, someone said, they told me not to start an accounting firm because they said it's too hard. People are going to sue me. I'm going to end up working more hours than I ever did before and all this other stuff. And I was like, who's saying that to you? And it was her boss. It was like, I think that the person that has hired you to work for them is <laughs> really benefiting from the fact that you haven't gone out and started your own business just yet, right? It's pretty safe to say. And they don't really sound like they're supporting your goals. <laughs> they sound like they're someone who's trying to keep you down. Number 13, this one's from the Bible. But also there are a lot of people who say it differently, right? But started back in the Bible, you reap what you sow. This has been the case in almost everything, right? Everywhere you go, if you put forward your best effort, if you are working hard, if you are being kind, if you're being generous, if you're being X, Y, Z, that is what you're going to get in return, right? That is why it has been taken from biblical context and used phrases throughout the centuries, right? You've heard many different variations of this. It's just accurate. So Keep that in mind. If there's something that you're wanting in your life, maybe you just need to sew it. Number 14, if it walks like a duck, if it talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. <laughs> Another way you may have heard this is when people show you who they are, believe them, right? So oftentimes we give people chance after chance after chance after chance, right? When they do something wrong or they hurt us or, you know, whatever, they continue to show us their true colors and we continue to show them mercy, but <laughs> they haven't changed in however long it's been that they've been treating you like this. And they've always been that way, probably, right? So when people show you who they are, believe them. And if they walk like a duck and they talk like a duck, they're probably a duck. And nobody needs ducks in their lives. <laughs> Except me. I want a duck. I want a pet duck. <laughs> so number 15 is you get what you pay for. I'm sure some of you have seen this meme, so I'll go ahead and show it here as well. But it's one of my favorite ones to see online where it shows somebody drawing a picture of a horse and then it says the client has asked me if I could do it cheaper and then it changes into like a stick figure I love that one <laughs> so always keep this in mind I mean if you are willing to pay more you're going to get better quality better service better whatever right there are going to be things like that in all of life so keep that in mind sometimes most of the time money equals value if you want to get something for cheap, then I wouldn't expect the best value. I wouldn't expect the best service. I wouldn't expect someone who has the most education or the most experience or training in the field that you're working at. And sometimes we can't afford value. And that's okay. That's a fact of life too. But if you can't afford it, definitely keep that in mind. You're going to get more value based off of whatever you're paying. So number 16 is the best things in life are free. But that doesn't mean money is evil. Okay. I know this is a hard one for some people. I know from the term, the money is the root of all evil, right? It is the root of all evil, but money isn't evil. Okay. So obviously spending time with your loved ones, you know, doing things that you enjoy, being present in the lives of your families. These are the things that truly bring value to your life. Okay. But... <laughs> Most people know that money is required to be able to do those things, right? You need to make sure your bills are paid. You need to make sure that you have a house. And so you have to pay the mortgage or the rent or whatever that looks like, right? And a lot of the times you need food and utilities and all the stuff that you have to pay in order to make sure that you can have that time with your loved ones, right? So money is not evil. It is simply a tool that you can use for good or evil, <laughs> Alongside that is number 17, which is that money is a tool, not a destination, okay? So we don't want the goal to be, I would need to make $500,000 in order for me to be successful. No, we want the goal to be, I need to make $500,000 because these are the things that I want to do when I have that money, right? 
I want to spend more time with my family. I want to travel. I want to build a business. I want to do this. I want to do that. Whatever it is that your goals are, that's what you want to be thinking about. You don't want to be thinking about the money. The money is the tool, not the purpose, not the destination. Okay. So number 18 is love isn't just a feeling. It's a verb. Yep. It's an action. <laughs> A lot of people I've heard say the money, the love just faded, you know, the love died. We just fell out of love, whatever it is, you know, and that might be that you fell out of the feeling. I totally believe that, but oftentimes it's usually something else, right? It's that you've held on to hurt. You've held on to resentment. You've held on to X, Y, Z. You didn't resolve this issue, whatever it is. I know there's a lot. I know love is complicated, but if you start showing each other how much you love each other on a daily basis, then things will change quickly. It's sort of like you reap what you sow, right? This goes for romantic relationships, but it also goes for friendships. It goes for employer-employee relationships. It goes for business relationships, pretty much everything. You have to show, you have to do, you have to put into action how you feel. Number 19 is take care of your employees and your employees will take care of you. <laughs> now, I know this from, you know, other jobs where I had employees working under me and also from having my own business, but taking care of your employees makes them happy, makes them feel glad that they work for you, makes them feel valued, makes them feel important, and it makes them feel inspired to do good work and to take care of the business. And without the employees, there's no business, right? So number 20 is blood doesn't make you family. Choice does right? Same thing. Actions. Actions always speak louder than words. I have family members who I don't talk to. And sometimes that hurts, but I have other people in my life that I talk to all the time and they're not blood related, right? So that doesn't make you family just because you share the same genes. It makes you family when you're willing to share each other's burdens when you're willing to support each other in hard times and in good times, live together, laugh together, love together, fail together, all those things. That makes someone family in my book. Number 21 is the hardest decision is often the right one. Not to be confused with the hard consequences of a bad decision. <laughs> but we all know, right? A lot of the times we know what the right decision is, but it's always the hard one. And therefore we want to overthink it and want to kind of try to find a way not to go with that option. So if it's going to be hard for you to do for whatever reason, that's often the right choice, right? <laughs> Number 22 is regrets are for people who knew the right decision, but made the wrong one. So those of you who are feeling regret for making a choice that didn't pan out the way you expected it to, I think that that's a mistake. I think that if you made the best decision, if you made the right decision with all of the information that you had at that time, and especially if you're a spiritual person and you prayed about it and you felt God was telling you this was the right option, then I don't think that you should feel regret for making that decision. It doesn't mean it won't be hard. It doesn't mean it won't necessarily have consequences, but I don't think you should regret it. I don't think you should live a life of regret when you knew the right decision and you made the right decision. Now, if you knew the right decision and you made the wrong decision, then I get that. I definitely feel regret sometimes for those kinds of things. But if you made the right decision, what are you feeling bad about? I know it's the results, but you made the best decision with the information that you had at the time, right? I don't know how you can feel bad about that. I think you should let that go and forgive yourself. Number 23 is an obvious one, but I'm going to say it anyways. Life is short. We don't know how many days we have on this earth. We don't know how many days other people have on this earth. So always live with that in mind. Don't let people leave angry if you can. Don't let your last words to anybody be harsh words or mean words or telling them that you don't love them or whatever it looks like. Always try to make up. Always try to make things right whenever you can. Obviously, that's not always the case, but anytime you can, 
remember that that person might not come back. Life is short. Number 24 goes along with this channel. In the end, the only people who will remember how hard you worked and how much time you spent working is your family. Yep, I know. If you have a job, those people will replace you like that when you die. Or if you get sick and you can't work anymore, like that, you'll be gone. The people who admire you at work, the people who give you awards, the people who give you attention, whatever it looks like, those people are going to forget about you the moment that you're gone. But the people who are going to remember how much time you spent at work away from them is your family. So make sure that you have your priorities in line. Number 25 is basically integrity. Have integrity. <laughs> Don't say something behind someone's back or behind the wall of social media protection that you wouldn't say to someone's face. We have grown accustomed to having the protection of the social media wall. We never have to actually speak to people in person if we don't want to, right? Pretty much. And so we feel that protection and it has emboldened our society. People have no fear of saying things anymore. They have no fear of consequences, nothing. But integrity is not saying something behind someone's back that you wouldn't say to their face. Now, some people use that as an opportunity to say mean things to people's faces. I don't recommend that either. But there's also the, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. That's a good one, right? That's just a bonus. I'm throwing that in for extra for free. <laughs> but, you know, keep that in mind. Say something nice or don't say anything at all. And make sure that you aren't saying things behind people's back that you wouldn't say to their face. I think that's a good lesson. And number 26, the one that I think is life-changing, is that everything in life is figure-outable. And if you already knew this, you're probably thinking that's not that life-changing. But if you are somebody who struggles and feels like things are impossible, feels like you are never good enough, feels like you can't do things because of whatever reason, I just want to tell you that you're wrong. The only reason that it's true is because you don't believe you can do it. Everything in this world is figure outable. Some things are hard. There's no denying it. There are a lot of hard things, <laughs> but we can do hard things, right? We can do hard things and we can figure out even the things that feel impossible. We can figure them out. It'll take time, it'll take energy, it'll take effort, it might take involving other people to get their opinions, to get their perspectives, but we can figure it out. Everything is figure outable. Well, which one of these was your favorite? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you like this video, would you consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel? I always talk about things that have to do with business and accounting and tax, but also just about life and living life as a business owner. So if any of this stuff strikes a chord with you, then I'd love to have you as a part of our Emerald Corner. So thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I will see you in my next video.